Hey, uh, we're back, and this time talking to one of the other original members of Petra, Greg Hogue. And Greg was uh, in the band at the beginning with me until 1978 on the first two albums. And Greg and I also played in a band called GHF with Bill Glover. And we did a live album, which doesn't exist anymore, I don't think. I've got a bunch of them. I, oh, you do? <laughs> I have one or two copies left. And we did uh, a thing called GHF, God is Forgiven, Volume 1, uh, which, by the way, we still have copies of that available for sale. And I want to tell you something. Greg is on two songs on the new project, Trophy Hunting for Unicorns. He played on a thing called Three Nails, which was one of the first lyric videos we did off of this. And what we're going to do today, uh, Greg is going to sign 50 different uh, CD inserts. Now, John Schlitt has already signed it, and I have already signed it. So what we have is we are gonna offer 50, only 50 copies of the CD with the autographs of three Petra members, two of them original Petra members. Now, this is not available through Rottweiler Records. It's just available through the merchandise page that uh, we have set up for the album. And it's, uh, it's available at jdfsalt.bigcartel.com, which I don't know if you can see that or not with my sloppy writing, but that is the um, way to get these. And it's the only place it's gonna be available. The record company's not doing it, I'm doing it. So uh, hopefully, those of you who are Petra fans, you're going to appreciate that. And I know those of you who have heard this project have heard an absolutely amazing guitar solo on Three Nails. And uh, that, that was, you did that in one take, right? Two takes. Two takes, okay. Yeah, Tim Bashan was just blown away by that. I was blown away by it. Well, I practiced all summer on it. Yeah, oh, okay. Well, well I practiced all summer on the song. And it, the lead just started to develop, and every time I played it was a little different, but the basic format came up somewhere through the summer. So it wasn't like I just did it once. I mean, the, what we have on the album was original for that day. <laughs> yeah, that was, well, pretty much, you know, like you said, one or two passes, and boom, there it was. And it, it's just killer. And I talked you into using a Les Paul on that because normally when you when you play out you like a, a Fender Strat. Right? Mm -hmm. For but now, yeah. Well, the Les Paul was really I wanted a good rock sound. Oh, yeah. Do you know what, what kind of amp did you use on that? Do you know? I used a little five watt Black Star tube amp. Okay. It's so crazy. This little bitty amp made that great big giant sound. And Bichon said that that it was a perfect amp to record with. He said it had that squishy quality. <laughs> yeah, he, he knows his stuff. He really does. And uh, Greg, like I said, Greg is going to sign these. So kind of okay. continue to talk to uh, Dr. Hogue here as he signs some of these things. You can sign that anywhere. I don't care what you cover up. Uh, he was on another song as, as he signs these. We'll talk about this too. There's another song called conversation and it's pretty unique for the album it's it's smooth jazz and it comes right after the rockabilly tune which i cannot pronounce the name anachronistic anachronism is that right i think i got it right anyway i can spell it but i can't pronounce it but it comes right after this rockabilly tune into into smooth jazz and greg did an amazing thing on that and basically my inspiration for that tune was from the Joni Mitchell album called Hegira. And on the album, she got some of the best jazz players in the world at that time, like uh, Pat Metheny, Jaco Pastorius, Larry Carlton, and a few others I, I forget. But what's unique about the album, there's no drums. It's just basically her voice, her guitar, all these other musicians. There's one song that has congas on it, but mostly it's just the non-percussive, non-drummers playing and her singing, and it's just brilliant. And I wanted to try to capture that and uh, use that as kind of a kind of an inspiration. 
And I, I came up with the, ama the main lick for the song on acoustic guitar, showed it to Greg, and finally figured out I can't play it as well as Greg. And so I wanted to do it acoustically, but the way he played it was just brilliant. And so what he did was he wrote the chord structure underneath it and kind of helped me in this one little connective uh, section, kind of came up with, with a different chord structure for that. And I played fretless bass on it and Greg just did some absolutely amazing stuff. You, you want to say anything about that? About that tune? Well, I, I, it was just a really good, your, your melody line was really nice. And the chord, the chord structure, I could, I, it took me a while, but I could hear it. I, I thought it was in there. A lot of that stuff is like that. And uh, it's funny, when, when you play jazz, you can play any tune you make, any melody line, there's chords to put it together with. And it just fell into place. You know, it was really fun to do it. And it just all of a sudden made sense to us. You know, we, we worked it around a little bit until it finally just balanced out and it, it ended up back where it started from. Yeah, it, it's a pretty unique little piece of music. No drums, sorry. So, <laughs> you want to show the guitar that you played on that one? Sure, glad to. Okay, th this is the guitar that you played on in conversation, right? Uh huh. Yeah. You want to talk about it a little bit? Pretty cool. Pretty, pretty neat. Well, the, the guy that had this made, he had it made from Gibson in 1994. I have a, a copy of the Bill of Sale, but he was a jazz guitar teacher and he wrote books on jazz guitar. And he had about 40 different custom made guitars uh, handmade by different companies. And when he passed away, his wife auctioned them all off. And many times with things like this, it ended up she got a pittance for each one of these. And so this is probably, and the guy that sold it to me, and in my mind, the best sounding Gibson arch top that I've, that I've ever heard. And I've got a few of them to tell you about. But anyway, it's just the way it was hand carved. He told me, he said it was hand carved and made like the ones back in the 30s. It's got that really deep, rich, to accompany uh, jazz bands without any pickups or anything. Yeah. 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 It's just really loud and it's beautiful, sounds great, so it was an honor and privilege to have it. So this is what I used on the album. And Do you remember just... any of the tune? Wow. Well, I'd have to say if I listened to it once I could again. Oh, okay, yeah, we don't have time for that, but it'd be neat if you yeah, well, it's just, that, that is just beautiful. But it's, it's beautiful. probably the, the last guitar I'll get rid of. Anyway, it's just, I've, I've had a lot of jazz guitars in my life and I've just been fortunate. I've never had one that had everything. Each guitar will have a good quality to it, but it doesn't, this has all of them. And when you, and I took the pickup off, I'm getting a better pickup for it, I have it. With this pickup on it, sounds as good as any jazz guitar you'd ever hear on a record. And I'm just privileged to have it. I, I, I try to do it honor, but you know, it's just. Is everything original? Yeah, oh yeah. Uh -huh. Tailpiece and bridge and mm -hmm. then. Yep. What about tuning keys? All of it. Everything's original. Uh huh. It's all Gibson. It's all made in the Gibson company. See, it came without a pickup. So I didn't want to alter the, the pickup. So it's, it's a floating pickup. So it's on the pick guard itself, so the guitar is still original, it's unaltered. Yeah, go play something just quickly and call it quits. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. And uh, remember, 
we have these things now with uh, three members of Petra signing them. So uh, available only through our Big Cartel site. Thank you.